Okay, so today um, is the strategy class, so I thought we'd go over improving your pieces, um, which can mean a lot of different things. It could be finding your worst placed piece and trying to find a better square for it, which, okay, when we're talking about knights, usually we're looking for an ideal square, some nice outpost uh, where they'll be really good and your opponents won't be able to trade for them. Um, when we're talking about bishops, we're talking about finding good diagonals, rooks, good open files. Uh, and we'll just, we'll get right to it, uh, so you can kind of see the first one. Uh, we'll jump into this position right here, if this is the first one. Um, so this is the, the game, a game between Raphael Vaganian versus Vladimir Akopian, not Verusian Akopian, who's, who's lectured here 70 times, uh, but Vladimir Akopian, so no affiliation to the club. And uh, in this position, we'll, we'll, get, we'll show you the first couple moves that were played in this position here. And now, uh, Black adopted a setup with b6. The idea is to put the bishop on b7, play moves like a6, b5, and ultimately c5 to open up the diagonal for the bishop. So that's what white is playing for. So white uh, found a way to stop him from doing that. So after a few more moves here, the bishop voluntarily went back to d3 with the idea of going to e4. Um, that's one way to prevent c5 because now there's a pin. And uh, after this move, we'll stop here for a few minutes. And it's, it's a little bit different when you're doing sort of a strategy puzzle than a tactics puzzle. Because when you do a tactics puzzle, there's one right answer. Sometimes there's multiple, but a good tactics puzzle has one right answer. Uh, and you know, it's either you know, a winning move or a losing move. And so you, you get the instant satisfaction when you solve it of, OK, that's the correct answer. Well, for these, uh, there may be more than one move that doesn't truly change the uh, valuation of the position substantially. But it is worth trying to figure out what moves uh, they came up with in the game. So in this position, White found a way to uh, remaneuver one of his pieces. And he found a good square for it. So. So we're not looking for like some huge tactical blow. It's not bishop takes g6 and checkmate. Um, it's a, just sort of a slower maneuvering type puzzle. And uh, so I've showed it to two of the, I guess they are the two highest rated um, other uh, instructors that we have here that work for the club. And they both came up with the same answer here that's just wrong. So, so, so I'm looking at, at the, the, the class A and B players to give me the first wrong answer here. Uh, All right, excellent. Um, so yeah, the answer, what was your first move again though, sorry? Uh, knight, knight tour from, from F3 to D2 to B3, uh, C, landing on C5. Okay, so this is sort of your, your idea? It seems long. A little mm -hmm. slow, Which is sort of the, uh, the right idea. C5 is the square that we're looking for. Um, I wonder if there's some way, if you move this knight, for me to take advantage of the fact that now this guy is not defended. Um, because now I'm attacking this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if I get to play a4, then I'm, I'm looking pretty good. Uh, so this is sort of the right idea, uh, but this is not our you know, worst place piece. If we look at all the pieces individually, it's the right idea, but uh, not the right piece. This guy has a useful job here. How about the knight to uh, back to b1? Excellent, yeah. And that's, that's what was played, knight to b1. Yeah, so a, a subtle retreat, and after that, you make your way to c5. Um, I'll show you the mistake that was made by our fellow instructors here. They had the idea of moving the bishop, so say bishop to b1, with the idea of going to d6, which would be an excellent square, except for you've allowed black to play the move c5. And if I play c5, uh, your center falls apart, because I'm taking here, and then this guy becomes weak. So you'll never get your knight to d6. And even if you do, I'll have some tactical tricks, like knight takes, and then queen takes your knight, et cetera. Um, but okay, we've hit upon the right move here, knight to b1. Also, we uh, have a threat now on c6. We've got two pieces attacking it. Otherwise, you may have time to play moves like a5 and a4. 
But since we, we gain a tempo by attacking the C pawn after you defend it, knight to d2. And we're on our way. And uh, OK, the game continued as such. And here, white has a slight but evident advantage. Uh, he didn't allow his opponent to play c6. And black will have to spend some time trying to get rid of this pes pesky rook. He's going to play moves like this and move his queen. Uh, but so out of the opening, white got a slight advantage. Obviously, not as uh, quite as satisfying as you know a, a tactical checkmate. But uh, these are the kinds of slow maneuvers that I think people really struggle to find in their own games. So people are always saying, you know, what should I do in the middle games? And it's strategy. It's planning. It's uh, improving your piece. Here are the knight. OK, he looks kind of good on c3. But what is he, he really doing? He doesn't seem to have much of a future. Obviously, c5, a much better square for the knight. OK. And we'll go to our, our second example here. And if you're just joining us, we're doing puzzles where we improve our pieces. So it's sort of slow maneuvering tonight. And in this position, it's, it's Black's turn. And we'll, we'll show a few moves so we can get an idea of the plot. After h5, white played a4, planning to restrict the knight over here. And after king h7, he also plans to restrict the knight on f6. Uh, which is a good idea when you have more space. He's trying to cramp all the black pieces, so black runs out of moves. But now, black went back. White is thinking, perhaps, of making use of the h file. So even though we just went to h7, now that the h file is open, uh, makes sense to retreat. And now after a5, we'll pause here for a few minutes. And we'll give you a, a chance to see if you can improve your position, uh, improve one of your, your worst place pieces. And I. Yeah, and I will ask first, um, which of your pieces are not very well placed? That's a good way, to, good way to start. Okay, so correct. Yeah, the knight on d7, uh, he's not looking too good. He doesn't have a, a huge future, or so it would appear. Anybody else? Yeah, the bishop. Yeah, so yeah, so we got two bad pieces here. Yeah, this guy, he's not bad. Uh, in the future, hopefully we'll get to double on the C file. So yeah, at the moment, he's, you know, he's not the best. So I mean, you might be thinking just some plan like this. Uh, but OK, white can also contest the C file. Do you want to simulate like a plan? Or are you very it's a plan. Yeah, it's about formulating a plan. Okay. Uh, it's, you know, it's not some winning move, and it's not just one move. It's, it's really a plan. All right, queen c7 with the idea of going to c4. OK, presumably I'll put a, one of these rooks here. Let's go with this guy. And then you want it to go here? Yeah. That was your plan? Yeah, and then double one. All right. And you're leading with your, your queen. Um, so maybe in the future I'll be able to use this, this square. I'll get an attack on your queen, and I'll be able to use one of these squares, or, or I'll just not move my knight. <laughs> So not quite. Just for the sake of argument, can you please try rook takes c3? Yes, this is a tactical possibility that does work in the position. And you, yeah, you see the follow-up? Knight takes d5. Yes, excellent. And if I take, which I don't have to, yeah. you play here with a yeah, discovered attack. And uh, so yeah, when I, when I first saw this, this was one of the things that I, I thought about. And white has to play the right move here. Yeah, so it's, it's quite good that you found this. Uh, and then I thought, OK, well, the queen has to you know, move somewhere, and we take this rook. But uh, there's actually this move, which should lead to an equal position. Uh, you can attack the queen. I can go here, and you can either trade first or take this guy. And the position is actually equal. So this is a, a very good solution. Uh, in the game, a more strategical solution was found. Um, I'll give you a hint as to what happened in the game, because obviously there's, there's yeah, knight h7. Um, and OK, we'll give you white's move. And you see the idea? Yeah, bishop f6, g5. Excellent, yeah. Bishop f6 to g5, getting rid of the, the bad bishop. And so this game turned around pretty quickly from this point. Uh, things should be 
pretty level here. But after this, um, White quickly made a, a few mistakes. So in this position, a very nice move here by Black. Bishop f4, just creeping in. Now the g5 square is available for the knight. And OK, White probably didn't lose with this next move, but he made it really difficult on himself. Uh, he traded the bishop, which is strategically rather dubious, because now the knight jumps into e5. And suddenly, Black has a tremendous position. Um, as long as you don't get forked on b6, <laughs> then, you're, <laughs> then you're doing pretty good. So here, all of a sudden, it's black that uh, turns out to be better. So he went from slightly worse to better, uh, just with the idea of getting rid of one of his poorly placed pieces, which is uh, another thing that you want to do with your pieces. When you have a bad piece, and they have a good piece, uh, he's controlling some really nice dark squares here, you know, particularly b6. Uh, you, can, you can try to trade it, because this guy isn't doing a whole lot for you on g7. So. Excellent. Any questions about this one? All right. So this is the game between Eugenio Zapatos and Edward Bend from Venice, 1953. Uh, and so here, Black decided to play on the queen side. And soon, they, they locked up the position. And now a4, or a5, excuse me. And then after well, a few more moves, Black is trying to prevent white from ever playing moves like a4. And after this move, we will pause. And so again, uh, we're looking for a plan. Uh, so it's not just a, a single move or, or a sequence of moves. It's, it's a plan to improve the position for black. OK, we've identified this guy. He's there to prevent a4, but yes, obviously it's we got a lot of pawns here on light squares, so that's, that's very good. Uh, the idea that was played, though, was, uh, was very nice. And this was something that happened to me in a game. So the way I was able to search for this puzzle was I remember I was playing a game against uh, Priya Darshan Kanapan, uh, who comes to the club regularly. Very strong I am. Uh, I'll probably be a GM pretty soon. Uh, he played this maneuver, and once he played the first move, you know, I thought I was doing well, you know, nice equal position, kind of like this or, or whatever. And then he played one move, and I'm like, oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. <clears throat> so I, I, I quite like this idea. There's a whole bunch of plans that uh, do make sense that you could come up with. Uh, I'll show you what happened in the game. Can you use it first? Yes. Because this one seems really tricky. It's very tricky. <laughs> <laughs> It has, <laughs> tell you what piece it is? <laughs> OK, it has, you, everybody so far has been, OK, here's the hint. Everybody's been playing so far on the king side. But black actually has a way to improve on the queen side, which is, yeah, the side raised more space. Did you see that coming? Did you see that coming? What is it? This is the most suggested move, and it's OK. Uh, I can play here. The point is now, even if your bishop comes back, you, you never really have any good place to go. <clears throat> and then I'd hate to tell you what, what the best move is over here, because then I, I'd be preventing the threat that, that we haven't found yet. So if you take immediately, uh, OK, I mean, we can, share, we can share the A file. I don't mind sharing. Knight still has nowhere to go. OK, so we're quite preoccupied with this knight. <laughs> but uh, OK, how, how can we? So this is the right idea. We would, we would love to be able to take here. But the problem is we're sharing the A file. We, we don't want to share. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Yeah. So what's the first Rook move? A7. Rook A6. <laughs> and we can open the A file anytime we want. Uh, so we can just build and build. We can triple on the A file, uh, which is a very powerful plan in this position. And OK, indeed, White sort of conceded that he has no chance. And he, uh, he got off the, the file because, OK, really, there is no chance. We can, we can triple up, and you, you get into trouble. And now, simply by taking and dropping the rook in, black is much better. <clears throat> 
Every day. every day do this lecture? Yeah, I might just do, I might just do the same puzzles. All right, what's up, Blaze? You coming in? You got your panda? You want to come sit in the front? Do you want to watch the class? Where do you, do you want to sit up here? Right in front of the camera? <laughs> if you sit over here, you can see the big screen. Yeah, you can sit right here, right up in the front. Uh, and here, Black could play the simple move G6. Uh, and okay, he came up with a sacrifice that's okay. Uh, he decided to sacrifice here, which is also good for Black. Uh, he could have played simpler. He kind of made it complicated, but he did go on to win this game. So, with that in mind, we'll jump to our fourth puzzle. That was a close the friends. Uh, let's go. Yeah. Let's check it out. It was actually a Dutch. Really? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, friends can, not, can transpose to Dutch, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of how we... I mean, this is French. Skeleton. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's the French pawn structure. Yeah. Uh, and we got to move F5 in. If it's a French, how did Black win? How did Black win? French is good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, so now... I think we're on this one. Okay, now this one... It's very, very nice. Uh, I quite like this one. It's a very beautiful idea. Yeah, this is a French. <laughs> this is a truly a French. Uh, it's a winner. And here, black played the move b6 with the idea of playing bishop to a6. Uh, bishop to d3 is a, sort of the typical thing. So white had a way to counteract this attack here. After bishop b5 check, he interfered with black's plan. And now he drops back to d3. And uh, sort of an important move here, bishop to a4. So not only uh, do you have sort of the idea that at some point we can play c4, and if your queen goes away, OK, you've got to worry about this pawn, but also you're preventing white from playing a4 himself, which he tends to do in these positions. He plays a4 and bishop to a3 and gets some pressure along that diagonal. Uh, so that's, that's typically how he can gain a little bit more space over there. So this just prevents that idea altogether. And after h4, he has some aggressive intentions. Uh, let's, let's not castle. Instead, h6. And after here, he pushes the bishop away. And now we pause. And at the time of this game, this was a, a novelty. This was the first time this idea ever occurred on the board. Now it's uh, become a part of theory. So if we have any winnower specialists in here, perhaps you know this idea. Uh, it's, this position has occurred now in more than 100 games. So we're still in, in opening theory. But OK, the idea is quite beautiful, so it, it deserves to be shown. Yeah, and if you don't just know it right off the bat, it's, it's quite difficult to, to conceptualize this. But if you imagine picking up your pieces and putting them on ideal squares, then uh, perhaps you'd be able to find this move. So uh, I guess there were like three things I was considering, but mm -hmm. uh, probably king d7, queen g8, queen h7, and then wow. king d2. Wow, very good. Oh, my. Very good. So nice. <clears throat> yes, yeah, king d7 with the idea of queen g8 and queen h7, uh, which did indeed happen. Well, fantastic stuff. Yes, fantastic stuff. <laughs> Uh, so here, actually, he defended with that. the rook. Actually, I've never seen that. I play this variation. You play this variation? I've now you know. Uh, you play it as black or white? Black. You play it as black? Now you know. Yeah, this is the, a big maneuver. Mm -hmm. And uh, now again, there's, a, there's more ways to maneuver his pieces. Uh, this also is a nice move. The bishop comes here. In the future, it might go to b5. Even more pressure on the queen side. And now the rook is prepared to swing over, either to g8 or f8. And uh, he's going to start opening up the king side. And so, OK, black is, is just controlling all sides of the board here. Uh, in the game, he went to uh, f8. And pretty soon, he was able to open up the king side. And OK, he has a good attack because he got all of his pieces over there. So, uh, And again, it's not rewarding when, OK, you didn't just instantly win. But it's just that the very idea of moving the king out of the way and swinging the queen all the way over to h7 is, uh, is very pretty to look at. So. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly safe in the center because it's it's so closed. Unless you're Mike Comer, you're you're really worried about this pin. 
but there's there's nothing there. <coughs> uh, sure. Yeah, we can go back. We can take a look at the uh, the whole opening here. Okay, so we got the the winnower. So this is still the main line. And then do, you do you do funny stuff here. Don't you do like funny stuff here? Is it here? Uh, you know, yeah, I started, yeah, 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 yeah. I started, <coughs> yes, yes. I, I started playing the Poison Pawn line, and I mm -hmm. every game I played with it. Oh, I love it as so, as both sides. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah I used to, I've been playing Queen A5 a lot. Okay. Queen what? Queen yeah, Queen A5. And the idea is you should put the queen on A4. And yeah. You're doing the same sort of thing. Like, yeah, you can you can do you can do this. Uh, so like in our game, the bishop went to A4, but you can also put a queen there, and it's kind of annoying. <coughs> Uh, okay, so here, yeah, here's how we got to this position. It was funny. I played the French a lot, and I've never seen B6. Yeah, I mean, it's it seems typical enough, because uh, yeah, you want to just trade these bishops. No, I just wanted to play but, that, like, it's an opening I played a lot. Of and you just haven't seen that idea. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, it's not the the most common line. It's not the main line. But this but this isn't chess openings explained, so we'll try to. Is anyone playing the Crasco French anymore? Okay, so now. Very popular. All right, getting a few more people in here. Uh, okay, so this is the game. This is our, our last example here for the day. Between Darcy Lima and Francisco Jose dos Santos. Uh, it was played in Brazil in 2001. All right, and in this position, uh, White played a5, and so suddenly we see that the King side has been shut down. So uh, the queen side's been shut down. So all of the action is going to happen over on the king side. So white quickly began to prepare his, his troopers over there. And OK, this also could have been part of the, the maneuvering lecture. OK, we, we bring our, our knight back over for where he's in the action. Uh, and now it, it is sort of a waiting game. We can play at some point, if white's going to make progress, he's going to play the move f5. Uh, but we, we can also just do nothing for a long time, keep the position equal. And at just the right point, uh, the only pawn break left is f5. So and it is a, a 2,500 player playing a 2,200 player. So presumably he's, he's thinking about winning here. And he's a little bit better. He has more space on that side. Uh, so they played a few more slow moves. And we'll pause here. Uh, this is the last, last example. And we'll see how would you guys improve the position. And again, I'll, I'll give you a minute, and then I'll, I'll ask you first which is the worst placed white piece. And then we'll, we'll see if we can find the solution. Yeah, the knight is not bad. Um, and we're going to play f5 at some point. So that seems like the right square for the knight. You're going to get the knight to f4? Somehow. Yeah, Somehow. Well, okay, you're, you're going to go here, sack a pawn, and then go here. Oh, I did. Yeah. You meant you were just going to take it. I will play the ace. I was speaking C. C. Right. As, white, as black, you just play a6? No, no, as white. As white, you'd play a6? Yes. Okay, and it might, might, take, might, it might take that eventually. So it's white to move now? It's, it's white to move. And so here again, we want the plan. Uh, we're looking for, and in this case, it'll be a bit more satisfying because it is sort of a winning plan. Because we're obviously much better in this position, just how are we going to make progress? Play the knight uh, c2, a1, b3, and then c, c5. OK, so you're trying to put your knight here on c5. Mm -hmm. OK, which not a bad plan at all. Uh, this should be nice should be perfectly fine. Yeah, it's a good place. It doesn't help with the f5 push, but OK, you are putting some pressure here on the e-pawn, so certainly not a bad idea. Uh, and it would be even funnier if he did this, having already done this. <laughs> it, then it would be funny. Really? Yeah, we could do all this. We could, do all this. we could go right back. Yeah, we could go right back. OK. <laughs> Maybe I would have you, thought that if yeah. I saw the, you know, the pool. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I'll ask, uh, what do you think White's worst place piece is in this position? The king. Yeah, so we're trying to play f5, and then the king side will open wide up. Uh, so you can imagine if we just you know, went for it a, a bit hastily. And when you take here, you know, there's going to be some pressure down the g file. So OK, where, let's, let's just pick him up. Let's pick him up. Where would we, uh, we want to put this guy? 
Because yeah, B two or B three. Excellent. Yeah. So yeah, the king goes on a walk, and he he ends up on B three. Wow. We got plenty of time. You know, there's there's no way for Black to make any progress here. He's just waiting. So White has all the time in the world. And there goes the king. There he goes. Okay, and Black is just waiting. And you'll notice White is very, very, very patient in this game. Because why not? You got all day. Uh, so also, we, we have to worry about this. This weakness in a lot of lines, that'll be significant. So here, okay, a lot of slow moves. You know, all these moves are fine. It doesn't change the evaluation. Both sides are just kind of waiting. Uh, we attack the H-pawn. And here we provoke you to play the move G5. So now we push. And now White, once again, will very carefully reposition all of his pieces. So, OK. And we're just, we're just waiting. White is very calm, very patient, um, all, sorts of, all sorts of waiting. And this is funny, too. OK, now that the file is going to open up, maybe some heavy pieces are going to be traded. Uh, maybe I'll even get my king a little closer. All right, I'll come back. All right, now it's, it's a bit safer. Uh, I'll, and we know which file is going to open up. We know some heavy pieces are going to be traded. If there's an end game, maybe I want my, my king a little bit closer. Uh, and now black takes, which you, you shouldn't do anything. Although white is ready to play here, which is, is pretty good for him. Uh, and he's, he must play this at some point. He's just probably going to wait close to 50 moves. And you might as well, because maybe your opponent will do something. Uh, <laughs> you know, and if, you, if doing something is wrong, then you should, you should wait for your opponent to do it. And so eventually it, uh, it happened. And black tried to do something. And OK, now we have two pawns with which we can push forward. Uh, we'll just show the end of the game, just because it's nice. Uh, OK, there's, there's two ways to take. But let's take with the pawn. Now we, we have lots of passed pawns. This is, this is trouble. Um, and OK, this also was a nice finish here in this position. Uh, we want to be able to push our g-pawn. So we need to get the queen out of the way. And here, black resigned. Uh, once the queens come off the board, three passed pawns is, is going to be significant. We're going to start pushing this guy. And we're, we're pushing all of our pawns. So black had had enough uh, of the torture. It really was. <laughs> you were just getting tortured there for, for the last 20 to 30 moves. Uh, OK, so a really impressive idea. And that's worth noting that even your king can sometimes be improved, especially when one side is closed and the other side's about to open. Uh, it, also, it happens occasionally, too, in the, uh, the king's Indian defense. You're, you're, as white, your king is on the king side. And perhaps the queen side is closed, and you're about to launch an attack. But before you do that, maybe you have time to run your king all the way over to the other side, assuming your opponent has no way to make any progress. All right. All right. So that's it for the examples. Um, but we, we do have a little bit more here. So we have a game that was uh, sent in. It's, it's been nice. We've been kind of inundated with requests lately. Uh, I got about 20, I'd say, this week. So uh, last week, we, we went over some of them. Uh, it wasn't filmed. So, so sorry if that was, that was you. I'm trying to get to all of them. But uh, you can keep sending in your requests to info at stlouischessclub.org. And I'll try to take the best ones, uh, the most instructive ones, and show them here. Yeah, I just can't, I can't do all the requests. Uh, this one comes all the way from the Netherlands, uh, from a guy whose name I hope is pronounced Heis, but I have no chance. I don't speak Dutch. So. It's G-I-J-S. Um, he said some really nice things. He wrote like mountains of paragraphs, which is funny. Everyone from every other country, like when it's a foreign country, they write like all these paragraphs and all this nice stuff. And then like when an American writes it, it's like, here's my game, dude. Like, can you analyze this? <laughs> it's like, so you know, you know, when I see this, I'm like, oh, he must be foreign, which is excellent. Uh, we love it. I'll just, I'll mention some of the things that he said. Uh, I wish to express my thanks for all the work that's been put into your YouTube channel. It's highly informative between the running jokes with props with Mr. Schrantz, the sarcasm of GM Ben Feingold, the storytelling of GM Yasser Sarawan, the enthusiasm of Mike Kummer, and the creativity Aviv brings to chess. There is so much to like. I could go on about all the others too, but let's end it with a special thanks 
to Ben Simon for all the great editing. Yeah, big, yeah, big props, big props from the Netherlands. Uh, okay, excellent. So this, let's see what he. I guess I don't have what he said about this this game on uh, my page here, but oh, he played a game on light chess, and he said this was a, the highest rated opponent that he's ever beaten. Uh, so he's playing an opponent rated 2,300. Uh, on light chess, Heiss's rating is 1,900, but uh, I don't know how indicative that, that really is of his rating. He played very well in this game. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll take a look. Do we know the time control? I believe it was game 45. And like, you know, he sent all these nice diagrams. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> this guy, he, he really tried. You've got to really try. It, uh, uh, 15 minutes with a 60 second increment. So, and yeah, I think he also sent in a game. This was a second submission. Uh, he sent in a game that was like 45 minutes. So it is a longer game. Uh, he's trying, he likes to think, I guess he likes to play a lot of uh, classical time controls. So very good. We'll take a look. All right. Which is he black? He's black. Uh, so we got the Pierts. All right. Not the opening that I would, I would recommend, especially to beginners. You do, obviously, you let white have as much space as he, he can desire. But... OK, having seen this game, it's, it's suited for players that like to counterattack. Uh, and now, the Austrian attack. So White's most ambitious and aggressive way of meeting the Pierts. And so we get some standard moves. And then there's huge bodies of theory for both castling and c5 in this position. Uh, in this game, he chose the move c5. And I believe it's here White already makes a very suspicious move. Uh, uh, sorry. So here e5 was played. And now uh, a slightly dubious move, h4. You have this uh, promising peace sacrifice uh, in this line, where you sacrifice a whole knight. Uh, so this has been played several times. It you know, requires that black is already castled. So that is perhaps what his opponent was thinking, because that is you know, a very aggressive way to play as white. But since we haven't castled, you know, h5 and taking on g6 isn't really a big threat. And here, I think black overreacted. He just played the move h5. Uh, I don't see any reason not to take here. Uh, h5 is not a threat. I just take your knight, and, and I'm winning. Um, and white doesn't even really have a great way to take back. If you take back with the queen, I play knight c6. I take on e5. Um, same if you take with your knight, I take on e5. And OK, I'm catching up in development. So. Yeah, I think if you just take here on d4, suddenly it's, I mean, black is already better. Uh, but as it were, h5. And now white found a really strong, powerful move here. Very aggressive. e6. Yeah, this is, this is a very strong move. So after we, we captured, there's a couple of good moves. But uh, yeah, bishop to d3. And OK, knight f8 was played. OK, so we're up a pawn. Um, obviously, the, the c pawn can be taken. And OK, it feels, it feels pretty comfortable for white here. I think I, I'd quite like to have the white pieces. Uh, I'd get these guys out and castle queenside. And in the game, I think even in this position, white put his queen on e2. Perhaps more accurate is, is just to play bishop to e3. Occasionally, even though it looks dreadful, black can think about taking this pawn. Um, so OK, I think it makes sense to have the bishop here. And the, I don't know, the queen might go to e2. The queen might go to d2. Uh, so I think it would be a little bit more flexible to begin by moving the bishop first. But as it were, he, he got his queen out to e2. And so again, I think here is there's a move I didn't like. Uh, I guess I'm just thinking about not getting checkmated as black. <laughs> so bishop d7, and then queen maybe to a5, maybe to c7, and long castles. Looks like the safest plan for black. Instead, he played the move e5. Now, <clears throat> white has a lot of pieces developed, and black doesn't. And this, you know, this sort of looks a bit clumsy. So it's white that really wants to open the position here. So I think in this position too, uh, what was, why did, why did it stop? And white just castled. But I think also very reasonable is just open it up. Yeah. Yeah, you want to open it up, I'll open it up. Um, and obviously, you know, we, can, we can take here a couple times. But 
yeah, I, quite, I still quite like white. You know, we have you know, good squares for this guy, and, and we're going over here. Yeah, four, Sometimes eight, we're four, taking eight, here. Eight, in bishop c5, yeah, it's just, yeah, that's just, just, just good. <clears throat> All right. But uh, as it were, he castled. So, OK, obviously, he's not worried about you taking on f4. That helps him develop his bishop. But uh, so part of his point, though, of the move e5 was you get to get the bishop out. OK, so he found a good square for his bishop. It's very good. And uh, again, white should be opening everything up as fast as possible. Because it, he sh you know, his black is still at least two moves away from castling. Um, so here, which is, which is fine. Um, but now he takes this way. Uh, he can get a much stronger attack after taking first here and then here, opening up the game as fast as possible. Uh, and okay, this this again. Okay, this would be a variation that also favors white. Uh, so he took this way, and uh, and black castled. Also interesting is taking here. I don't you know care so much about the pawn, but this actually is a good way to keep the position closed. So here I'm taking not with the idea of of getting the material, but I'm I'm trying to keep the position closed, and I'll I'll castle queenside on the next move. So this also was an idea. Uh, instead, he castled. OK, let's, let's open it up. And uh, I think white, again, missed, missed a chance here. Uh, he played king h1, which is a better square. Now, I mean, nothing bad is, is ever going to happen on this diagonal. Like, I'm not going to take your knight and then fork you. Uh, so OK, it's a, it's a slightly better square. but. Uh, after a move like bishop g5, white gets all of his pieces out very, very quickly. Uh, we bring our, our rooks to the center. The knight can jump in here. You know, this, yeah, you know, this is just good for white. So uh, king h1. And all right, I think this was a very good decision. Uh, we can't just babysit the g6 pawn <laughs> for the rest of our life. That pawn isn't. Very significant. Black needs to get all of his pieces out. He needs to prioritize development and coming up with a way with getting all of his pieces into the game. If you don't play this, then your rook on h8 is just kind of trapped out of the game for a long time. So I think this is a very smart decision. And we're looking at some pretty good squares here. You know, we're going to go here. We can put a rook here. And we can go here. These are the the sort of ideas that Black has, just getting activity. So that's very good. He took. And uh, rook h to f8. So this, this pin is moderately annoying. And after here, <clears throat> I think, again, black played uh, an inaccuracy, but a, a decent move. In the game, his knight went to f4. But can anyone suggest a, a better move? Knight where? B5? D5? Knight D5? As black? Sh should I turn the volume up, Ben Simon, so you can hear it? You'd love it? All right, this is just for you. Oh. <clears throat> did, you did you mean D4? E5. E5? Yeah, this should, be, this should be pretty good. Yeah, I think that's a nice active square. Um, and also good is here, you know, exploiting the pin. So yeah, you, there are some ways to to exploit the pin and get a a pretty good position here. And okay, his, his move is okay. I guess we can go a little bit farther. Uh, so now we are threatening in this position. Um, we're to take here. We can take with either the knight or the bishop, and then follow it up with with rook takes. So uh, if say you get out of the pin. Like, like so, OK. You've got to stay where you're protecting f3. So this is the only place you can go without you know, dropping a pawn on f3. Well, now we take, and we play bishop to e5. And I mean, queen g2, bishop h3. And if you, if you push here, um, you know, I, can, I can drop back. I can, I can probably just take this. 
and I've, I've really gotten rid of sort of my problems, and I don't think Black has any serious issues in this position anymore. Um, in the game, he went to f4. Not a bad spot at all. And uh, OK, as white, I would probably move this bishop. Um, I'm looking at this pin. But I assume here, I assume any square that's, that's safe is probably very reasonable for this, this bishop. But he took here, which is a mistake. Uh, and now, like a, like a good Pierce player, Black showed his, his tactical ability. Uh, so I throw it over to the audience now. This is a very nice sequence. The next, next few moves here uh, will challenge the audience. And perhaps Black had seen this. Perhaps he was, he was hoping White would fall for this. Take on G2? How could you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm just pointing out, you know, if you don't know, then you're guessing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a, little, do a little guessing. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe in this position, I have knight A4. You want to take on F3? Yeah, he didn't even look at my move. It's a good threat. How did I see it? Uh, <laughs> uh, OK, anybody else? Uh, knight takes uh, bishop on uh, d3. OK, and I assume I'll take this. Then bishop takes uh, knight. OK. Queen h3. OK. Uh, and now oh, Bishop Brook. It's a queen. No, 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 no. It's a bishop on the. Oh, I see. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. I mean, we're getting. Gonna play that. Yes, knight takes bishop. Okay. So if I take back immediately, do you have something? You're gonna perpetual me. You you gonna do this to me? Yeah, I mean Danny Pachuca. Ooh, he finds that draw so fast. He, he, he couldn't wait for this. Uh, don't we have, uh, okay, let's throw this in. And now here. Yeah. It might still be uh, perpetual <clears throat> Okay. Well, yeah, because yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. This. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't want to go there, then you take this, and it's getting it's getting a little bit dicey. It's getting a little bit dicey. Uh, we'll return. We'll return quickly to the game. There's. Uh, I mean, this is this is a, a very complicated position, um, and he did find the right move here, which is good. I mean, there's there's quite a lot of potential here. So. And he yeah he couldn't move the pieces and he didn't have a full audience to help him out. So what was the move here? So the move is first. We take on f3. And if you take back with the queen, which is the strongest move, then we take your bishop on a7. And you're borderline losing is white. In the game, he took with the pawn. And now we, we should be able to find the, the move here. Nah. All right, there's two good moves here. So you can say either one. If only somebody really brilliant walked into the room. The guy that always comes in with just the right answer at just the right time. Queen A3 check. Oh, Mike Comer. Mike Comer to the rescue. Uh, you can also start with knight takes a7. The point is the same. Uh, now your your white the white queen is overloaded, so you can't defend here and here. And so black just won a piece. And making it a little bit worse on himself, he played knight to d5. And now a very nice tactical blow by black to really really polish off this game. Bishop d4. Bishop d4. Excellent. And so now the, the queen is pinned, so you're, I'm going to play queen to g2. And all right, so now the game is, is just over here. So this, is, this was the last move. A very nice way to end the game. And uh, congratulations too on many mistakes. <laughs> too many mistakes. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of inaccuracies in the middle game. I think white had a, just the better position straight out of the opening. Yeah. And uh, he didn't find a way to really open up the position as quickly as possible to, to really cause problems to black. Uh, Black was able to get all of his pieces out. He made sort of the right decision. 
Uh, he didn't worry about his g6 pawn. He just got his knight out. And he got all his pieces out. And okay, the tactics ended up working out for him. <laughs> uh, a very well played game. I think you should be be quite proud of this one. Uh, yeah, and yeah, game 15. And okay, even with with an audience this large and this high rated, uh, still very difficult to navigate all of these uh, these complicated lines. And okay, a very very good job. <laughs>